so them with integrating and moving forward through this journey so they can improve their lives through plant medicine. We should see these things and we can help to make that. We should allow for home grow and allow people to garden and learn how to treat themselves. This is a holistic uh, movement. It's not just one subject. But unfortunately, we only have one subject that we can present to the state at a time. And right now, it's to legalize adult use in the state of Florida. We may never have this chance again. So if you do anything, get out there and let's vote yes on three and help people to understand how this is so important. I want to thank you guys very much today, not just for today, but for all the work that you do every day in helping Florida become a more evolved state for everyone. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, everybody. All right, so next up we have Bionic Bloom. Angela? It's just been crazy fun. I know, I know, I know. But yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Jordan's here. Okay. He, he's in the back, oh, right good. over there. Oh, yeah, if you want to say hi to him. Yeah. He came to help me with my my booth. All right. So our next speaker is one of our premier sponsors of this event from Bionic Bloom, Dr. Angela Fisher. And do you have uh, some people up here with you? Or? All right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it gets crowded at the end. Best group in the state, right here. <laughs> thank you. All right, thank you guys. Thank you very much again for everything that you're doing to help to change the laws here. And without further ado, Dr. Angela Fisher with Bionic Bloom. Thank you. I want to start with recognizing that our schedule is tight. We are scheduled for the 2 p.m. Tantradelic session at the Steep Station. Because we are over time here, we're probably not gonna be on time over there. So maybe 2.30ish if anybody is here for Tantradelic, and you should be, it is a fantastic activation. Meet us over there at 2.30. To start with, I want to introduce and give you the opportunity to get to know our facilitators, our doctors, our therapists, our hypnotherapists, and the rest of the team. So we're not gonna talk about me, we're gonna talk about them. Ella? Hi, I'm Ella. I am a clinical administrator with Bionic Bloom as well as a wellness assistant. I teach yoga. Um, we'll be offering some exercise classes here soon as well as uh, we call supplemental therapy classes, workshops, events. So stay tuned for those. Hello, that's better. I'm Dallas Carey. I'm a clinical psychologist. I think I've worked with Bionic Bloom for like three years now. <laughs> I've lost track of time. Um, I'm very much a holistic psychologist with a natural health focus do a lot of relationship counseling, work with kids. I do psychedelic assisted psychotherapy, which is phenomenal, I love that. And recently doing some autism testing and what else am I forgetting? Um, that's it. <laughs> Thank you. Hi family, my name is Monica. I am a whole health coach and change facilitator. With over 10 years of experience in the industry, I am an authority in helping people cultivate safety and harmony within their bodies in order to create freedom and health. Thank you for being here. 
Hello, I'm Dana. I am a physician assistant and I practice holistic psychiatry for Bionic Bloom. I like to give my patients time to assess what their needs are and I also run an ecstatic dance. Hi, Whoa. I'm Cheryl, Cheryl Moore. I'm a PCC credentialed trauma-informed hypnotherapist. I've been working for the last 25 years as a consultant, educator, and coach, helping people resolve those issues that are holding them back from being able to write the rest of their story, the story of the life they actually wanna be living. And my favorite job in the whole world is to give the pen back to you. I use a variety of modalities, including neuro-linguistic programming, uh, parts work, also known as internal family systems, timeline work, core transformation. I've got a lot of tools available, again, to give you the pen back to write the story of the life you want to be living. Hi, my name is Trisha Kirby, and I actually come in a little different than everyone because I'm an intuitive, I'm clairvoyant, so I look at what is holding people back, their challenges, and I look at how to align them with their life purpose so you can really live the best version of yourself in any moment. And I also work with bioresonance. I'm a bioresonance practitioner. It's a, a system I trained on in Russia that helps figure out on a deeper level what you need to change to, again, move into your best life. And I absolutely love this company. I cannot say enough good things about this. I come in as a total non-user of anything. No, never tried cannabis, never tried anything. And Dr. Fisher has saved me multiple times with microdosing psilocybin, and if you are ever tempted and interested, it is the best thing on the planet for re a reset of your blueprint. It's amazing. I guess it's my turn. Uh, my name's Ethan. Uh, I'm the executive director here. I basically make sure everyone is happy and uh, try to, you know, throw puns and make the office a nice, fun environment. Um, I also am a certified uh, psychedelic practitioner as well as an EMDR therapist. Um, and I also am working towards my clinical, li uh, clinical counseling license as well uh, for my master's. And I really love it here and I love my team. Um, and they all make my day feel a whole lot less like it's, you know, a nine to five job. So I really love it here. So the question is, what is it that we do? Why are we different? And for that, I'm gonna pass the stage over to Cheryl and Monica. Thank you so much. Monica, it's gonna start with involving you guys. We need some feedback. Okay, family, we have a question for you. What do you think of when you hear shadow work? What does that mean to you? Give us, give us some answers. <laughs> some shadow boxing. I see some shadow boxing. Anything else? Carl Young. Yes. Yes. Yes, sir. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> yes. Cheryl, what is shadow work? Shadow work, it's been a buzzword over the last period of time. You've probably seen those shadow work journals popping out. They give you a lot of words to try to figure out what you're running from. It's the part that keeps chasing you that you like, sometimes you wrestle with, sometimes you just ignore, you find a way to get out. Well, one of the things that gives people pause with psychedelics is the fear that the shadow is gonna come and get you, right? So Monica, why don't you tell us a little bit about your experience? Sure, okay. So I want to share why shadow work goes hand in hand with psychedelic therapy. Many years ago, I found a website where I purchased some microdosing capsules, not knowing what I was doing without guidance. And um, some days I would feel lighter and nice, and other days I would feel terrible. <laughs> And all of a sudden, things from my subconscious, old traumas started to come into my awareness to pay me a visit. And it was very uncomfortable. So it's been a long journey since then. I have dove into um, the ins and outs of integration, to integrate, true integrative therapy with psychedelics. <clears throat> I want to share why having structure and guidance while working with psychedelic medicine is so important. And 
we see this a lot now in society or people are turning to microdosing and psychedelic medicine and wanting it to fix all of their problems. When in fact, what it really is doing, it is bringing what needs to be addressed into our awareness and then we get to take action. So this is what, something that we do here on our team at Bionic Bloom. This is why we are an incredible team to work with when it comes to therapeutic psychedelic medicine, okay? We offer high touch, integrative support with a team that is very specialized in many different modalities. We have hypnotherapists, psychics, uh, psychiatrists, health coaches, and we collaborate in order to treat the person as a whole. Okay, we are looking at your nutrition, what you actually enjoy doing. We work together to find different modalities that work for you to support each person in their own unique journey. What if I told you that each one of you could very easily make peace with your shadow? We're offering you the opportunity to be supported as you consider this journey, but I am actually suggesting the underlying, we need a reframe for shadow work. This is not your enemy. It's not a part that's hunting you down. It's a part that loves you and actually is very, very supportive and integral to your success as a human. That's exactly what your shadow wants. So I am proposing a reframe for the shadow. Let's look at it with a fresh perspective. Now, how many of you have actually heard of parts work or internal family systems? One, very good. I'm gonna give you an opportunity here in a safe environment to actually get to meet one of your parts. No, not your shadow. That's for in the privacy of you know a therapeutic environment. But here, I'd like to give you, if you're willing, the opportunity to get to know a little bit more about parts work and what we can do to establish a relationship with your own parts. So the first thing you need to know is you don't have a single bad part, not at all. They are all good. They all have the highest intention for you and they are adaptive. They've been helping you survive since you were itty bitty. And unfortunately, sometimes, because they helped you survive when you were itty bitty, you didn't have as many resources. And they kind of get stuck around those ages when things started happening for you. So if we understand that they're not bad, they're actually on your side, then we can create an environment where we can help them find peace. One of the challenges that we have is we think we've got to make ourselves happy. So we go on this pursuit, trying to find this or that, listening to the inside of myself. I'm really feeling my inner child say I need a nap, so I'm going to take a nap. We're doing all of these things to make our parts happy. That will, I mean, think about it. A child, if you always give it what it wants, will not be happy because it doesn't always know what it wants. What our parts actually need is to find peace. And if our parts are at peace with themselves and with each other, then guess who gets to be happy? You do. And that is one of the key components. You don't have any bad parts, and the key to finding happiness is actually helping them find peace. And we can do that. They're very, very willing to compromise all of these things. I want to put you in touch with one of your parts, if you're willing. So. For this exercise, the first thing I want to do, I need a little bit more audience participation. If you were to think of who the best version of yourself could be, what's a one or a two word descriptor that would describe that best version of yourself? You would be what? Spontaneous, Spontaneous. love it. Integrity. Integrity, love it. What was that? Free. Free. Unstoppable, yes. Confident. Funny, yes, I love that one. Special. You'd have enthusiasm, yeah. Very good. You'd be curious. You'd be compassionate. All of these traits if, of your idealized self are already there. Some of them are a little bit more dormant than others, but they're there. So if you were to step into who that person is with all of itself, that's what I'd like you to try to do right now. If it were possible to be that person, 
let's just be that person for the next few minutes. Then if you feel safe enough, I want to invite you to close your eyes for this exercise. You don't have to, feel free, make yourself comfortable. But if you are comfortable enough and with your eyes shut, I want to invite you to notice your breath. As you breathe out the old, breathe in the new. Breathing out the old, just breathing in the new. I wanna draw your attention with your eyes closed, gently breathing to the top of your head. Notice it's a little bit warmer than the rest of your body. I want you to invite that peace to just start melting down over your head, relaxing you, relieving pressure, it's slipping down over your forehead, down the back of your head, moving down toward your ears, relaxing your temples, releasing the pressure, your jaw is looser. You can release your tongue from the roof of your mouth. You feel this warmth moving down your neck toward your chest, it's slipping down your abdomen, your arms are feeling heavier. Just relaxing in this moment, peace, safety. Let the pressure slip out the bottom of your legs. And if you're willing, I want to invite you to use your mind's eye to create a safe space in front of you. Whatever pops into your mind is correct. First impression is right. Might be a color, might be a picture, might have a sound. Whatever comes is correct. Notice what you see in that safe space. That's your safe space. You can go here anytime you want. It's yours. Now I'm gonna ask you a question related to today. Very simple question. Whatever thought pops into your head is correct. The question is this. What was your expectation when coming to Canadelic today? Your first thought is correct. Whatever it is, hold on to it. What was your expectation for coming here to Canadelic today? If you can, bring your awareness into your body. Where do you feel that thought in your body? Is it your chest? Your forehead? Maybe your throat? Where is it? If you feel safe enough, I invite you to put your hand on that place in your body and thank it for showing up for you, just as it is. Then, if it were possible for that thought to step out into that safe space in front of you, invite it. If that thought were to step out from your body into that safe space, what would you see? What would you hear? Maybe it's a color. Maybe it's an image. Maybe it's the sound of a voice. Whatever comes is correct. That's right. Thank it for showing up for you in that way. This is a part. Once you have identified that part, you can ask it, what is your highest, most positive intention for me? Your first impression is correct. If you want to go deeper, you can ask it, what is it through having that, whatever answer it gave you, do you want for me that's even more, that's even higher? What is it that you want for me that's the best thing in the whole world? When it responds to you, thank it. I'm gonna invite you to ask it, what information does it want you to know right now? I'm gonna ask, do you understand what it's sharing with you? If you understand, thank it. If you don't understand, ask for more clarity, ask for the meaning. You can ask it, how can you support it better right now? What does it need from you?
Whatever it asks for is in your means, in your power to grant it. If you can imagine it, give it to it. Your imagination is the key to your future. If you can see it, hear it, feel it, it's possible. As you consider the feedback that you got from this part with gratitude, just enjoy this moment of connection with this part that's on your side looking to support you through today. And when you're ready, you can come back to the rest of this session right here, the sound of my voice and the, your Bionic Bloom team standing on the stage. Welcome back. That's what parts work is all about. And in a therapeutic environment, you can get to know all of your parts, your support team. It can be as gentle as that. Shadow work can be as gentle as that, meeting the need finding the core intention behind what's going on. It's been hunting you down all this time or you've been running from it and see that this part really, really is looking to help you and support you. How do you feel in your body now? <laughs> Feels good to be alive today. Um, I'd like to also offer the fact that we, you have continued support. Support from this team, whatever kind of support that you are looking for, it is here. Some of our favorite ways to support others, our family, our community as a team, is with psychedelic journeys, couples therapy, one-on-one -on -one therapy, microdosing integration. We have group options and one-on-one -on -one options available. And we are learning that as we are coming together in, group, in a group setting, the healing power is really exponential. It's really liberating to be witnessed in your healing journey. Yoga, yoga nidra. What else am I missing? <laughs> yep, we, and we have hypnosis. Yep. You can do hypnosis with microdosing mm -hmm. or... Um, if you want to just take on the full psychedelic experience, we can coach you through that individually if you prefer. But hypnosis is another gateway into that core state where you can't hide behind lies. Mm -hmm. And that's the beauty with psychedelics is that the truth comes up. It's a truth mm -hmm. serum. Um, and hypnosis is a, a similar way where we shed or, or pull back all the layers and allow the real self in this safe space to come forward and allow true healing to happen in a remarkable way. Thank you so much for your time and allowing us to share this with you. Just a little glimpse. We look forward to getting to meet you at our booth right out here. And if you have any questions, ask any one of us. We're happy to help. Thank you. So yep, thank you to our team. And also, Dr. Fisher really is bad at promoting herself, so she doesn't like to. So that's Dr. Fisher. She's awesome um, and has a very, very loyal client base because... It's really hard because no one wants to leave her, <laughs> so she usually stays very busy. Um, so I just want to take the opportunity to thank everybody else who's been here, um, for everybody else who you all came here today. So we'd be talking to an empty room if you weren't here, so thank you very much for that. Um, and I just want to express the gratitude to my team. Um, we wouldn't be able to be here without them. Um, Dr. Fisher and I relies so heavily on every single one of these people and it allows us to give a unique and personalized approach to wellness and therapy for our clients so please give my team another round of applause for them and yeah we have a booth right there so come hang out with us um, normally we do a weird Q&A session but I feel like those are always kind of weird and awkward so just come talk to us we'll answer whatever questions you got so thank you Guys, it, I, I highly recommend going and speaking to them over at their booth. Um, I know people that have been through some of their retreats, and they really take a lot of care into taking care of the people that trust them.
<laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Another example of how healing is really taking shape in this new environment that we have. We have businesses that are able to um, address the questions that people are having about how to use these psychedelics and psychoactives in a very therapeutic way um, as opposed to just using it as another Band-Aid um, or as another distraction, so to speak. So our, our, next, um, our next panel is on ketamine. Do we have Dr. Joe and Dr. Simon here? Dr. Joe and Dr. Simon. I'm just texting to see where they're at. Oh, there you are. How you doing, Dr. Joe? And do you have uh, Dr. Simon with you as well? Oh, just you. That's fine. We could do that. So if anybody has heard about ketamine, um, heard about ketamine being used in a therapeutic session, um, we're going to answer those questions here today and uh, help you learn. Who here knows what ketamine is? Show of hands. Oh, wow. Wow. I didn't know what it was when I took it in 2006. <laughs> it led to a very um, crazy night in Las Vegas. Uh, in the Mandalay Bay. <laughs> I fell into what they call a K-hole. So, um, you know, ketamine was one of the things that kind of scared me for quite some time until I understood how it's used and how it's used in this therapeutic setting. And, you know, every modality has its drawbacks and its positives. And um, that's one of the things that we're able to learn here today and find what is right for you. So. Without any more ado, I'd like to introduce Dr. Joe. Thank you. Hi there. Perfect. We have a. Okay. How are we doing today? Good. Well, my name is Dr. Joe Pallara. I'm one of the owners of Intervision Psychiatry. Our tent's right outside the door. Um, I'm a board-certified adult psychiatrist, and our clinic specializes in IV ketamine treatments for mental health, so PTSD, depression, and anxiety. So, ah, here we are. Let's see if we can get this working today. There we go, perfect. So my talk today is the truth about ketamine, but it, we would really be amiss if we didn't discuss the truth about mental health treatment currently in America. So. When you look at the current state of treatment, you think of things like Prozac, Zoloft, Lexapro, the SSRIs, the SNRIs of the world. Now, in psychiatry, everything that we do is based off of this study a lot for depression treatment. It's called the STAR-D trial. What they did was they took people who were depressed and gave them an antidepressant, citalopram or Celexa. If you remain depressed, you went down to the next uh, level of treatment whether switching into psychotherapy, adding a different medication, or adding another one in combination of that one. If you're still depressed, you go to level three, still depressed, you go to level four. What they saw with the results of this were not terribly impressive. So at the first level of treatment, 37% of people went into remission, meaning they no longer met criteria for a major depressive episode. As they tried more and more medications, they had less and less of a chance of going into remission. Now, the authors of this study said, well, don't look at that. Look at our total. Out of the initial, let's say, 100 people, there's much more than that. Out of the initial 100, 67% of people at the end were in remission. So these numbers, while they don't look impressive, they're like, well, 67% of people weren't depressed anymore. But just recently, there was a reanalysis of that data that was out, and go figure. Some of the numbers were a little manipulated. And so how'd they do that? When they were going from level to level, they let some people go into the next level and be included that were no longer depressed. 125 people were already in remission, but they were included in the group that they were trying to figure out if they had already had a response. So naturally, it's going to be higher. They also used this different rating scale 
when they had the, the trial approved, it was supposed to be using this HAMD rating scale. Turns out they made their own rating scale, the authors of the study, and that's the rating 